A man who killed a mother with a bolt gun in front of her three children has had his prison sentence increased by 10 years. John McFarlane of Bury St Edmunds was jailed for life for the murder of Mary Griffiths in November 2008. Today, the Court of Appeal ruled the original 20-year minimum tariff was unduly lenient and extended it to 30. A Northamptonshire MP has repeated his calls for a ban on the burqa. Speaking in the Commons, Philip Hollibone, the Conservative MP for Kettering, said the traditional Muslim dress was offensive and against the British way of life. Well, last month in another parliamentary debate, he said it was the equivalent of wearing a paper bag over your head. Workers at four John Lewis stores across the region have been celebrating today after being awarded bonuses totalling 15% of their annual salaries. Employees at the shops, including this one in Cambridge, were given the payout after the company's profits grew by almost 10%. Staff at the company's Waitrose supermarkets will also receive bonuses. The company did warn, though, that trading conditions were likely to get harder. Well, it's 12 minutes past six, right here on Anglia. Now some more news from your part of the region. Norfolk and Essex police have come equal second in a new table showing how well forces in our region are performing. The figures cover a range of measures including how well police forces solve crime, reduce deaths and injuries on the roads and represent value for money. Suffolk police came equal fourth, two places above the worst performing forces in the country. A woman from Suffolk who was told four years ago that she only had two weeks to live is running this year's Race for Life. Claire Blair from Stowmarket was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer four years ago. The 36-year-old will run with her three young daughters at the event in Ipswich in June. It's a big achievement. Obviously, um, I've just got better and better and better. Um, I need to keep going. I need cancer research to keep going. I need the race for life to keep going. If you want anything out of life, then you get off your backside and you go get it. Good luck with the training, Claire. Now, a catering student from Norfolk has come up trumps in a major cookery competition. 17-year-old Daniel Gibson from Case to near Great Yarmouth won a silver medal at the British Cookery Championships, beating continental chefs along the way. Malcolm Robertson's been to meet him. In the heat of the kitchen today, Daniel Gibson and his fellow second-year catering students at Great Yarmouth College. A week ago, Daniel was also in the heat of battle, competing in the Salon Culinaire British Open Cookery Championships in London. Against young chefs from around the world, his classic fish dish of place bon femme won him the silver medal. I've never been under that much pressure to be watched before by like, an audience or judges. And I mean, to be in work in front of some, some really fine chefs is just... It's really, it's good experience. OK, so it's like that, all right? It's... Today, the only people Daniel had to impress was his lecturer, David Patterson, and, of course, those like him who are on the catering hospitality course. Hotel Olympia is, is the biggest catering exhibition in Europe, um, and to walk away with a medal, silver medal, is, should be something to be proud of. Last week, fish. Today on the menu, rolled belly of pork. Good, simple food and ideal training towards his ambition of being a top-class chef. Maybe it's not too much of a surprise that Daniel is such a dab hand at fish dishes. He does have pretty good experience of the sea. His father is a fisherman, and when Daniel himself isn't in the kitchen, you'll find him in his home village of Caister, where at the age of 17, he's already a crewman on the local lifeboat. He may have had to settle for silver last week, but to those who know him, Daniel Gibson's pure gold. Hip, hip. Hooray! Marco Robertson, Anglia News. People in Ipswich are being asked to volunteer to help clean up their town. The Borough Council is loaning litter picking kits to anyone who wants to help local organisations like schools to clean up their neighbourhood in time for spring. The Spring Clean Fortnight begins at the end of March and the kits are available to any volunteers who would like to help with the annual event. Now it's the International Year of Biodiversity and to mark it, the Broads Authority has launched a major programme of events. It's part of a drive to highlight the need to manage and protect the rich wildlife of these important wetlands. Fiona Oates reports. The seemingly timeless landscape of the Broads, created by man around the 12th century when digging for peat. Now these wetlands are teeming with important wildlife, some rare. But it's a landscape that needs to be carefully managed as well as enjoyed. Some of the species that we know and love, such as the swallowtail butterfly, um, the marsh harrier, the bittern and the bearded tit, all those charismatic species, we need to think about what's going to happen to those in the future. This landscape has always changed 
and we we value what it has now but we're thinking very carefully and working with all our partners to think how might this be in the future and preparing for that. Some plants are bullies. Here the land has been stripped back because one species was taking over. Now new seeds are being given the chance to thrive. There are a few non-native um, species and we've got a few of those in the broad so we're keeping an eye on six plant species that have come into our waterways in particular and also things like um, the American mink and the signal crayfish again from America that have been released into our waterways and are causing havoc. Reed beds also need to be cleared to prevent too many new trees. Eric Edwards, a reed cutter for more than 40 years, has lived through the slowly changing environment. So Eric, more than 40 years on the broads, how's it changed? Well, in the early days we used to get a lot of snow and ice, but it seems the late, late, later years we're getting a lot of high water levels. I think things have uh, turned around. I think like in the dikes, I mean, I, I'm not a plant person, there's lots of water lilies in, in the dikes the last four or five years. You see that I always say the, the prettiest birds in, in, the, in the marshes look a bit of tits, and they come when you're actually cutting reed. Uh, I gather they like the seed head, and they come in little groups. And you see the bitten occasionally, lots of marsh harries. I think, uh, in general, everything's improved a lot. Today, the elusive bittens were not to be found, but instead a heron in full plumage was happy to make an appearance. Fiona Oates, Anglian News, Howell Hill. A lovely day on the broads, it looks. Like oh, now. gorgeous. Now, the future of the Blue Cross Animal Centre in Felixstowe should be decided by the end of April, we're told. 16,000 people signed a petition that was protesting against the charity's plans to close the centre and use the money to open a new branch in the north. Managers now say they're considering other ways to keep a presence in the county of Suffolk.